Hello there, Year 11. We're back again for the final instalment for Week 3, which again is on reducing balance loans. The most common type of reducing balance loan that you see everywhere is home loans. They're situations where you borrow a large amount of money and you gradually repay it over a number of years. Usually repayments are monthly, but you know repayments can also be quarterly or fortnightly or weekly. They can be different. So today's focus is actually a bit of an investigation into what happens when repayments are something other than monthly. We're gonna do a comparison between repayments in a particular situation done weekly, monthly, and um, quarterly. And the other thing we're gonna to do today is a little bit of investigation into what happens when an interest rate changes. Because very commonly, particularly with home loans, you can get these things called variable rate home loans where the interest rate can and does change. And that affects your finances because it can change your repayments. It can change the amount of time it takes to repay a loan. So that's our focus today. Reducing balance loans when we have different repayment periods and when we have different interest rates. That's what we're doing. We are still working with the same um, reducing balance loan calculator that we've been using in previous lessons. Linked there, linked everywhere and also shown on the right hand side of the screen. I've already gone through the bits and pieces of what each of these things mean. Uh, please refer to the earlier videos if you'd like to revisit that. I'm going to focus on the big examples today. So here we go. Right. Geraldine borrows $83,000 to be repaid over 10 years to establish a tattoo removal business, always the business of the future. The interest rate for a loan is 4.9% per annum. Calculate the length, the term of the loan, and the amount to be paid in the last payment under the following situations. Now these three situations that are listed here, you actually pay exactly the same amount each year in theory. Right, and that is that amount. You would always be paying $10,548.64 each year. All that we're changing here is how often you're doing the repayments. You will still pay the same amount in total each year, but you're gonna pay it a little bit differently. This here says quarterly repayments, repaying every quarter of a year. This here says monthly repayments, where you're paying every month. This one has weekly repayments, where you're paying every week. We are gonna investigate the differences in the mathematics under these situations. The question asks, firstly the question asks for the term of the loan under each situation, and then it asks for the amount to be paid in the last payment under each situation. So for each situation we are going to investigate both of these aspects. So term of the loan, we've got our calculator here, as with all of these questions, it's a matter of working out what you've got and what you want, putting it in the calculator and getting an answer. So in this case, for term of the loan, we start with present value, which is just P. In all cases, it was 83,000 borrowed. The repayment, uh, it's given to us here. It said quarterly repayments of $2,637.16. What else we got? Future value, A. Well, to pay off the loan, at the end of the loan, no one owes anything, so your future value is zero. The rate, we can put it as a percentage per year, so it's just 4.9, it'll be the same in all scenarios. And we want to know how long it's gonna to take to pay off, which is actually N, the number of time periods. We've gotta be careful in that this is the quarterly one, so I better change the compounding to quarterly or we'll have issues. Let's put in our information, 83,000. Oh, make sure the repayments are negative, it's money going away from you. Negative 2,637.16, future value of zero, interest rate 4.9%. We wanted to know N, the number of time periods, I click periods and it says precisely 40. And it's in quarters. So if I wanted that in years, what would I do to turn quarters into years? How many quarters are in a year? 
Hopefully you realize it's 4. 40 divided by 4, it's going to be 10 years. Now, as it was precisely 40 years, it's a bit of a trick question with the amount in the last payment. The last payment will be a normal payment of $2,637.16 uh, because there's no part payment on the end. If this time period had given us you know, 40.6 or something like that, there would have been a partial payment at the end, but there's not. It's precisely 40. You could check that by essentially going 40 times that normal payment amount, and you should get precisely the amount of the original loan. Um, no, actually, you won't get the original loan because of the interest. But yeah, there is no part payment at the end because it's precisely uh, 40 payments. So anyway, right, going on to, we're gonna do the same with monthly repayments. So that we wanted to know term of the loan, how long it's gonna take, And we also then want to know the amount that's in the last payment. So term of the loan. This time we're working in months. So I'm just going to clear the screen a bit so it's a bit less confusing. We're now working in monthly repayments. So I better change the compounding to monthly. The, we're still starting with the same loan amount. The repayments are going to be different though. It tells us it's $879.05. So we're going to have to change that. So the repayments are $879.05. Future value is still zero. Interest rate still 4.9. We still want to work out number of time periods. We've already set this to monthly. It's telling us that it's going to take 119.51 uh, months to pay back. So that's interesting, isn't it? Now, I particularly note, in this case, it's not an even number, is it? So you have a 0.51 uh, payment at the end there. So we are going to end up with an interesting situation. So firstly, let's look at term of the loan. If it's that many months, how many years would it be? So remember that to turn months into years, we would divide by 12. And that's going to give us 119.51 divided by 12. It's going to give us 9.96 years. So it's uh, slightly less than 10 years. So notice that this is going to actually be paid back very slightly quicker than if you had the quarterly repayments. Remember the quarterly repayments took precisely 10 years, but the monthly repayments is just under that. So the big question though then becomes, well, how do we find the amount in the last payment? Well. The, essentially what we're going to do to do that is we're going to find out how much is owing after 119 repayments. Why 119? Because at 119 repayments, we only have this part payment left, right? You're going to have to do a 120th payment to make sure that it's all fully repaid. But at 119 repayments, it's almost fully paid off. And if I, do the, I did a normal 120th payment, it would pay back too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out how much is owing after 119 repayments, which will give us a good idea of what the last repayment has to be. So let's do that. Uh, we're going to go back to our machine. We started off with 83,000. We're repaying $879.05 a month. And we want to know what is left, what is the value after 119 months. So this time we want to know the future value. 
Interest rates still 4.9% after 119 time periods. So I change that to 119 time periods. Everything else is the same. I click future value and it tells me that $451.28 will be remaining to be paid in the last payment. All right? So your last payment is going to be approximately $451.28. Cool. Now remember the normal repayments are $879.05. So yes, that's your part payment. The last one will be a part payment and it will be less than the normal monthly amount. That was the second scenario. The third scenario goes down to weekly. And we're going to do the same as this again, except we're going to deal in weeks. All right, so here's our weekly repayments. Right, so weekly repayments, you're still starting off with the same loan amount. The repayment around now has changed to $202.86. We want to know when it's fully paid off, which means the future value is zero. The interest rate's still 4.9%. We want to know how many time periods, which is how many weeks. We better be careful. We better set this to weekly compounding or it's all going to be very nasty. So 83000 Payments, they're a negative number. Future value of zero, interest rate 4.9. We want to know number of time periods. And it says 517.08 weeks to pay loan. Now, if I want to turn weeks into years, how many weeks are there in a year? I hope you recognize we're running with 52 for that. It's not precisely 52, but it's close enough. So 517.08 divided by 52. It's about 9.94 years. Now, what was the previous one for months? It was about 9.96 years. So again, um, it's slightly less. I could use the wavy thing because we have approximated here. All right? You'll find that the more often you do repayments, the quicker these things get paid off. It doesn't make huge differences, but it does make a difference. So that there was us working out the term of the loan. And yet the term of the loan is very slightly smaller as we do repayments more often, even though we're paying the same amount in total. And the second part there was to work out the amount in the last payment. We've got to do the same trick as we did for the months. Uh, we want to know the, repay the original amount of loans the same, the repayments the same. We want to know what the value is at the last moment here. So after 517 weeks, we want to know how much is left. So at 517 weeks, you've almost paid it off, but there's got to be a small amount in the 518th week. And we're just going to find that out now. So we want to know the future value, 517 time periods. So that reflects what we've got here. I press FV to find how much is left for the final payment. Final payment in the 518th week will be $16.13. All right, so that's our first big example today. That's where you change the time periods for payments. So we just compared a situation where we paid the same amount per year overall, but in one of them we did our repayments quarterly, one of them monthly, one of them weekly. We could have also done fortnightly. We could have even done daily if we want, but you see the general effect. The more often you do the repayments, the quicker you pay off the home loan, and in turn, we could do a heap of calculations that would show you actually pay a little bit less interest the more often you do the payments as well. I'm going to make a second video for the second main example now. So catch you later. Bye.